All right, I told you I was gonna talk about core data thread safety, so here it is. NS manage object context, the context thing, that thing that you're sending executes to, the things you're hitting save, the things you're using to create tweet, tweet subcontext, colon, whatever, that handle on the database is not thread safe. A context can only be used on the queue that it was created on, period. If you passed a context to another queue, like you tried to dispatch off to some global concurrent queue and you passed it the context or even just passed it a tweet, okay, that's not going to work because that tweet was created on this other context. So, in fact, not only the context, but everything you create on that context has to all be done in the same queue. So now you're probably thinking, well, how the heck do I do multi-threading then? Because a database, especially, you can imagine for example, wanting to load your database off the main queue, because you might be loading lots and lots of things. Now, your queries, you're probably going to do those on the main queue, because the user's looking at that information. You want it to be highly responsive. Okay, it's probably worth, and core data is super fast, especially with queries, so you could probably do that on the main queue, but loading it up, you probably don't want to do that. All right, so how do we do multi-threading? Well, the way we do multi-threading uh, in core data is each uh, database can have multiple contexts, okay? So the database underneath is multi-threaded. It can have multiple contexts writing to it, okay? Completely different context writing to the same database in different queues even. So it's fully multi-threaded. So that means we have to have a context for every queue. Whatever queue we're going to access the database, we have to have a context in every queue. Now I'm going to show you how to create a context or on another queue, so you can do something on another queue in a second here. But first I want to talk about this important method in context called perform block. Okay, perform block just takes a closure, a closure that takes no arguments, returns no arguments, and it will ensure, this is an insurance method, it will ensure that everything inside that closure happens on the right queue for that context. Okay, so this, don't get confused, this method does not dispatch you know, uh, cause background threading. What this is just making sure that that closure executes on the right queue. Okay, so this is a way that you can kind of be safe. And some might argue you should put perform block around every single call to every core data thing you ever do, because that will assure that you'll never have a problem where you're accessing the context not on its queue. Okay, it accidentally uh, you got some bad code. Now, that might be a little bit of overkill, especially if you're mostly using the main queue uh, anyway, and you really, maybe you only use uh, background queues for this tiny little bit of processing on the side. It's not like you have a tons of context and lots of different queues all going at each other. Uh, so it might be overkill, but if you're doing anything where you have, truly have multiple contexts on multiple queues and they're accessing things, this is a good way to be safe, okay? So all this does is it makes it so you are safe. The code inside that block will be executed on the proper queue for that context. Even if it has to dispatch, it will do it if it has to. If it doesn't have to dispatch, if you're on the right queue, it'll just execute it, fine. But if you're on the wrong queue right now and you execute this, it will dispatch it to the right queue. There's also perform block and wait, which will get it on the right queue and wait till it's done and then continue in your queue, okay? But this doesn't really talk about how do I get another context in a different thread, right? I, I want to do some code on another thread. Where do I get a context? The only context I know how to get right now is view context. That's the main queue's context. That's the only way I can get. Okay, well, you're going to use this really cool method in persistent container. This is new in iOS 10 and really cool method, super cool. Makes it really easy to do background processing with core data. It's called perform background task. Remember, this is a, a function on persistent coordinated, that thing you get from the app delegate. And this takes a closure. This closure has one argument. The argument is a context, and that context is appropriate for use on this other thread that this is going to create for you. So this perform background task finds another queue, not the main queue, some other queue, and it creates a context in that other queue, and it executes your closure on that other queue in the background, 
Okay? Now, it's a convenience method, so if you really needed to control the quality of service, for example, of the queue and all that, okay, well, you can't use this, but 99.99% of the time, whatever quality of service that queue is getting is the right one for core data, because core data knows this business. Um, so you're gonna do it. Now, inside this closure, a couple of things really be careful of. One, never use view context in here. Do you see why that would be horrendously bad? to use view context inside this closure? Because this closure, by definition, is not executing on the main queue. By definition, this closure is on a separate queue, on a background queue. That's the whole point of this thing, is to put this thing on another queue. So never use view context in there. That's why it's in red, okay? The second thing is, don't forget to save this context. If you do a whole bunch of stuff in here and you don't save, you just did it for nothing, because you did it in memory, and then this block went away, you're never gonna get that context back again, that data is lost. It's just all gonna leave the heap and nothing ever happens, never gonna get committed to the database. So don't forget to save before you leave. Now when you save, it will push it down to the database and your other context, like your view context, will see it, okay? And so these two contexts, the one that's happening on this background and your view context, they're working on the same database. So when this one saves, boom, this guy's gonna start seeing those changes. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we react to seeing those changes um, in a minute here. Okay, so everyone understand this? Because you're gonna have to do this in assignment five. Okay, I'm gonna want you to do all your loading off the main queue and all your fetching on the main queue. All right. Core data is huge, uh, huge. There's not really, I can't cover it all. Uh, it's got optimistic locking, for those of you who know about database, it's got optimistic locking and all that database uh, stuff. It has un full undo redo, which is incredible. It obviously knows how to roll back unsaved changes. Okay, if you have changes in the memory and you wanna roll some of them back, you can do that before you save. It knows about staleness, like if I make a fetch, how long before I really wanna fetch it again because I don't trust that the data hasn't changed, right? How, how, how long does it take for the data to get stale? And a lot of other things uh, in core data. So I can't cover it all, just not enough time to do that because I still have to talk about a whole another topic about core data here. Uh, but you'll want to check the documentation. You won't need anything else of this stuff to do your homeworks, of course. I'm just trying to get you started with this. Uh, but you need to know that this stuff is in there so that one day uh, when you go out and do some significant iOS database stuff, you'll know that these features are out there.